Head coach Bart Lundy is here with us. 73-72, the final score. Lincoln Memorial prevails over Queens. Hands the Royals their first loss of the season. Uh, first, coach, before we talk about the game, uh, let's talk about just the success again to start the season. 16 straight wins before a loss. That's 44-0 combined over the last three seasons. Uh, you have to be proud of your team. Uh, I know it comes to an end tonight, but I, just to say, I think you have to be proud of your team, proud of the job that you've done uh, to start again and reach number one in the country for the first time in program history. Uh, well, I don't know about me, but uh, I'm proud of them. Uh, they put in just uh, an enormous amount of work uh, since the season ended last year. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the tribute to them that we have had these starts and that, uh, that we were able to reach number one in the country. Uh, obviously, that's going to be short-lived, but uh, uh, as, you, as you build as a program, uh, it's little tastes. It comes in little bites. And, uh, and this was a, hopefully another little bite, and uh, we'll continue to grow. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I said it at some point to someone, but um, when you have long win streaks, uh, little cracks open up, and sometimes you learn more from losses than you do from wins. And uh, um, you know, I don't know that that's why we lost tonight, but I, I do think that we're not. We we haven't been as good as we were, uh, and sometimes a loss will refocus you. Uh, to get there. All right, let's uh, take this game, break it down in order. You take a 14-point lead in the first half. Uh, Todd Withers gets in foul trouble. He picks up his third. He goes out for pretty much the remainder of the opening stanza of play. Yeah. LMU goes on a run. You carry a three-point lead in the locker room. Outside of the Withers foul trouble, what else changed from the 14-point advantage to the three-point advantage? Well, we had just a, uh, a series of, of plays that uh, – were really uncharacteristic of our team. Just really poor, poor shot selection, poor drive selection on offense, and then some really just silly defensive mistakes. And uh, you know they're you know, the best offensive team statistically in the country, and they make you pay, and they and they make us pay, and uh, that lead evaporated really quickly. Back and forth it goes in the second half, and then Trayvon Shaw at the free throw line misses two free throws on a one point lead. What do you make of the look that you got? Mike Agassi had a three from near the top of the arc. Pretty open look, missed it short. Mike Davis tried to tap a follow. That wouldn't go. What do you make of the final sequence? Did you get the look that you were hoping for? Uh, well, I, I would say probably no. Uh, I, I really would have liked to see Ike take that to the rim and uh, have Todd following him um, behind him for, for a tap attempt. Um, you know, Ike chose to, you know, whatever he saw, I'd have to watch the film to know really what he saw. Uh, but whatever he saw, he felt like uh, that he had an open look. And he did take a, you know, straight on pretty much wide open three. So, uh, you know, I don't know how much better we can get than that. But down one, you know, statistically, you, you kind of wanted to get it to the rim, give yourself a chance to get fouled. But, uh, you know, Ike's made plenty of those shots uh, in his career for us and, uh, and you know, I'll take him with the ball in his hands and him making decisions. A couple of numbers. You turned them over 24 times, but they out-rebounded you by nine. Just as a whole, their shooting percentages, 45%, 50% from beyond the arc. Uh, yours, or where they've been, honestly, of late, a little bit lower than they had been earlier in the season. Um, what was the difference in this game? Well, I think you just said it. It was uh, it, we, we, we didn't make shots, yeah. and then... Um, and then, you know, especially in the second half during a, a crucial stretch, they got offensive rebounds that really hurt us. Um, you know, I, I think Todd's – there was a combination of foul trouble with Todd, with Sean, and with uh, DJ going out with injury. Uh, it made us play some, some really funky lineups that, that uh, we weren't prepared for. So in the last, I would say, six minutes, it was, it was very difficult to manage the game the way we had planned to manage it. Uh, because the lineups were so different and we had guys playing out of position. Um, and that's not an excuse. You know, we still got to make the plays. But uh, I thought our offensive rhythm wasn't, wasn't good down the stretch. And uh, a lot of that was circumstantial with the foul trouble. And then uh, DJ's injury really, really hurt us with our, with our rotation. Final thought on the environment, the crowd. This is the best that I've seen it in my three years around the program. 1,378 people in the gym tonight. What would you think of that? Oh, it's fantastic. You know, that's 
if we could get this, uh, you know, start to be a tradition here at Queens, that would be great. Uh, I wish we had sent those 1,300, except for the LMU fans, uh, home happy. <laughs> um, you know, but it, again, little bites, uh, little tastes. That's how you grow a program. Um, we've never seen a regular season atmosphere like this uh, in the history of, of Queens basketball. So uh, keep on moving. You know, we, we're, we, whether we win or we lose, we, we celebrate and we mourn until midnight, and then we tuck it away and, uh, and we find a way to get better from it. Well, even in a losing effort tonight, I think you and your team have a lot to be proud of. 73-72 the final score tonight. LMU wins it in what I'll say now I think will be the first of four meetings this year. So Possibly. Thanks, thanks Phil.